Hello boys, this is part two of the memo of task 6.16 and I've decided that I'm not going to go through every single entry with you in all three of the ledgers and in the trial balance. I'm just going to quickly scan through it and highlight the things that are important. First of all, I know that you are form three, but I want you to still classify your accounts as owner's equity or as an asset or income or liability or expense and make the plus and minus signs like we've taught you to do in form two, because this just helps you to remember what side the opening balance needs to go, etc. So you would notice with every single account, I've done that. Then capital was straightforward. We only had an opening balance and we had that entry in the CRJ. And remember, if there are only entries on one side of an account, you can just add them together and give us the total. Then drawings, drawings increases on the debit side because it's the D of dead. Okay, so just remember to make your plus and minus signs. Nothing weird here. The owner didn't um, take trading stock or stationery or something for himself. So it's just the CPJ transaction on the 28th. Land and buildings and motor vehicles are both assets but they only had opening balances. There were no movement in these accounts. Then equipment. Equipment is an asset. It had an opening balance that we brought down and then we bought some equipment in the creditors journal. Okay, so that will increase the amount of equipment that we have. But we also sent some equipment back in the CAJ. Now remember the moment when, he, when we send equipment back, it goes to the side where equipment decreases, the credit side. And also remember the posting rule with the CAJ is creditors control is debited and everything else is credited. And then you just balance your account. Trading stock. Now remember this account is probably the most important ledger account on form three level because it contains all of the journals that we've done so far. Okay, so the opening balance will go to the debit side because trading inventory increases on the debit side, decreases on the credit side. Then there are things that can happen that will increase the amount of trading inventory that we have. The first thing is that we can buy inventory and we can pay for it right now. Okay, so that will come from the CPJ. The next thing is that we can buy inventory, but we buy it on account. Okay, so that will also increase the amount of stock that we have. And another thing is if debtors that bought stock from us send the stock back, it will also increase the amount of stock in our storeroom. So that's why these three journals are on the debit side of trading stock. Then what would decrease our trading stock is if, first of all, we send stock back to a creditor, okay, so then it will decrease the amount of stock that we have. That's why the CAJ goes to the credit side of trading inventory. Or if we sell stock in the DJ or in the CIJ, then we will have less stock. Something that's important is that you have to remember that certain journals are opposites and they can never go to the same side. Okay, so the CJ and the DJ will never go to the same side of an account. And the DAJ and the CAJ won't go to the same side of an account. And the CPJ and the CRJ won't go to the same side of an account. So if you ever get confused with one of these entries, then just think about it logically. Okay, and then you just balance your trading stock account. Debtors control um, is sort of on steroids if you compare it to debtors control from form two. Okay, so it's an asset that increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. The opening balance goes to the debit side. Then, remember, debtors control means that people owe us money. Okay, and you have to think about this in a way that when people owe us more and more and more money, it goes to the debit side of debtors control. And when people owe us less money, it goes to the credit side of debtors control. Okay, so when, people, when we sell things on credit to customers in the DJ, people owe us more money. That's why sales from the DJ is debited. Then 
if people previously paid us, but their checks got this on it, in other words, it's like they, they didn't really pay us and we cancel that payment, they owe us more money. That's why bank from the CPJ also goes to the debit side. And remember, you have to specify that it's bank RD. Then another thing that will increase debtors control is all of the debit entries in the general journal. And we have a debtors control column in the general journal that we total. Okay, so we only have to bring it to debtors control once. You don't have to post every individual entry in debtors control. You post the column total and you call it journal debits. Then things that will decrease the amount of money that debtors owe us is if they repay us in the CRJ and if we allow some discount to them in the CRJ when they settle their accounts or when they send stuff back in the DAJ because we can't charge them for something they've returned. Okay, so this actually decreases their accounts. And the same thing as with the journal debits, we take that credit column from the debtors control column from the general journal and we post it once to the credit side of debtors control. Okay, so that's the only thing that's sort of new. And then you just balance it. Bank didn't change at all from Form 1 and it wasn't even in overdraft, so this was very easy. Creditors control is a liability and it increases on the credit side, decreases on the debit side. Remember, this means that we owe people money and the more and more money we owe, the more and more we credit creditors control and if we pay money back or if we get discount and we owe less money, then we will debit creditors control. Okay, so if we purchase on credit in the CJ, it will go to the credit side of creditors control. But if we return something in the CAJ, it will go to the side where creditors control decrease. If we pay back our debts, then creditors control will decrease on the, credit, on the debit side. And if we receive discount, creditors control will also decrease on the debit side. And then you would have noticed for the creditors control column in the general journal, we only had journal credits. There were no um, entries that affected creditors control on the debit side. So we have this journal credits here on the credit side. Okay. If we had journal debits, then it would have been on this side. And then you just balance your account. Sales didn't change at all from Form 2, so it stays exactly the same. Cost of sales changed a little bit because of the DAJ. Remember, in the DAJ, it's as if that sale didn't take place because people return the stock that they have bought previously. So we reverse the cost of sales because there's no expense associated with our sale anymore. Okay, That's why we decrease cost of sales on the credit side. And remember, the contra account for cost of sales is always trading inventory. Okay, and then you just balance it because suddenly this nominal account has balance sheet section characteristics. Debtors allowances comes from the DAJ. Please remember that the contra account for debtors allowances is debtors control. Wages was straightforward. Stationary. Let's look at stationary for a little while. Um, it had an opening balance, so we said total brought forward. Please remember to say total brought forward every time for the nominal section. Then we bought stationery in the CPJ for cash and we bought stationery in the CJ on credit. That's fine. But then we also returned some stationery in the CAJ. That will go to the credit side of stationery because suddenly our expense associated with stationery is a little bit less because we returned the stuff and we don't have to pay that money. Okay, so we decrease our expense for the year. And then, because there are entries on both sides, you need to balance it. Discount allowed. Discount allowed is an expense. It's when debtors pay us money, but we allow them some discount on the settlement. And we usually record it in the CRJ. And the contra account is debtors control. Okay. But now, sometimes we allow discount to debtors on a check. And that check gets dishonored and it's returned by the bank. Then we want to cancel this discount that we've given them. They don't deserve the discount because they didn't really pay us. 
and we do that in the general journal. Now you would notice that the date is the 18th year, it's not at the end of the month because Discount Allowed didn't have a column in the general journal. So then you have to go back to the specific transaction. You would have seen for that transaction the contra account was debtors control and then it comes from the general journal. Okay, so this is important. If it's not debtors control or creditors control in the general journal, then you post it like this. On the date that the transaction took place, you go and look at that specific transaction. What was the other account's name? You write that there and general journal. And now you just have to balance it. Discount received was straightforward. Okay, remember the contra account from, for discount received is creditors control because we debited creditors control. We don't have to pay that money to our creditor. Consumable stores. We bought consumable stores on credit and we returned some of it in the CAJ. Okay, so once again, entries on both sides. Rent income was just in the COJ. Bank charges just in the CPJ. Bad debts was in the general journal, but once again, it doesn't have a column. So you post it on the day that the transaction took place. If you go and look at that bad debts transaction, the contra account or the other account that was part of the transaction was debtors control. And then you write GJ and the value. Interest on overdue debtors. Please don't call this interest income because of the um, materiality principle. We don't just write interest income. We have to tell the owner what form of interest income are we earning. Is it interest on fixed deposit, interest on overdue debtors, interest on current account, whatever. There are many different options. So you have to specify. Okay, now once again, this is a general journal transaction, but it doesn't have a column. So you post it on the specific day and the contra account was debtors control. Interest on overdue creditors. Same thing, please don't call it interest expense. Okay, you have to specify because we've got different type of interest expenses. We've got interest on loan, interest on overdraft, interest on overdue creditors and all of those. So we want you to specify and it was in the general journal. Didn't have a column so you post it on the date when the transaction took place and if you go and look at that transaction, the contra account is creditors control. Okay, and that's your general ledger. Then just quickly, if we look at your debtors ledger, a little tip. I always make a plus sign in the debit column and a minus sign in the credit column for a debtors ledger. Because like in this exercise, where you had to do a debtors ledger and a creditors ledger, sometimes you get confused throughout an exercise. Or especially in an exam, you guys get flustered and then you quickly want to do your debtors ledger and you forget where the amount goes or how it affects the balance. Okay, so make your plus and minus signs. Then very important, remember the opening balances were given to you. The list from last month was given to you. So you use that for the opening balance. Please remember to write duplicate invoice if it's a debtor because the customer gets the original, we keep the duplicate. Same thing with the receipt. The customer gets the original, we keep the duplicate. Okay, this is all straightforward. You should be able to do this by now. Please remember that if a debtor's check gets dishonored, then you have to write bank statement RD check because we will receive or we will see proof of this on the bank statement. And then if the discount is cancelled in the general journal, you write discount cancelled. Don't write the journal voucher number if it's a general journal transaction. The same thing with interest, right, interest charge on overdue account. Okay. Credit note is not a duplicate credit note. It's just a credit note. You can write C slash N, that's okay. And then remember to update the balance the whole time. Okay, so NOL, same thing. Remember to make your plus and your minus signs. And remember to write duplicates when it's an invoice. Okay, straightforward. G. Ganson, G. Ganson just was written off. Okay, so nothing else happened to G. Ganson. Remember, if it's a general journal transaction, then you have to write account written off, not the journal voucher. And you don't have to make a zero year. You can just make a little line. Don't just leave the block blank. I don't like that. I prefer it if it's a zero because I'm a numbers person. I don't like that line there, but it's up to you. 
Then R. Rogers, same thing. Remember to make your plus and your minus signs. It just helps you to update your balance every single time. And remember to write duplicate if it's an invoice or a receipt. And that's it. How do you compile your debtors list at the end of the month? You look at the last updated balance for every single debtor and you just write it here and that's your value. And remember something that's important about this value is it must be the same as the balance brought down on the 1st of May in the debtors control account. Okay, quickly let's look at the creditors ledger. Same thing, what I do is I'm in the creditors ledger, I make a minus in the debit column because um, liabilities decrease on the debit side and I make a plus in the credit column just so that I don't get confused. The balances were given to you by using the list of the previous month. Now, if it's an invoice, it's not a duplicate invoice because we are the customers, so we keep the original invoice. You don't have to write original. Okay, so you can just write invoice, but I want to remind you that we renumber invoices that we receive from creditors. So it won't be invoice MW blah, 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 whatever the textbook says. It will be invoice number one or invoice number two or invoice number three or whatever the renumbered numbered is. Okay, so then something else, if we pay, the source document is not just a check. Okay, we give the check away. We have the check counterfoil that's left in the check book. Um, this can't receive debit notes. All of those are straightforward. I just want to draw your attention to this line. If it's a general journal transaction, then you don't write a journal voucher number. You write interest charged on overdue account. OP traders, straightforward. Remember your minus and your plus signs here. It just helps you a little bit when you update your balance. Remember it's invoice number three, not the original invoice number that we received from OP traders. We renumber. And remember, it's check counter for. And you compile your creditors list by using the last updated balances for every creditor for that month. And this 6030 must be the same as the 6030 that was brought down on the 1st of May in the creditors control account on the credit side. Then your trial balance, I'm not even going to speak too much about this. Okay, what do you do? You take the last updated value. In, in other words, the totals or the balances brought down on the 1st of May. That's it. And on the account where it lies is the side, um, I mean on the side where it lies in an account is the column that you write it in. So capital had a total on the credit side. That's why you write it here. Equipment had a balance brought down on the 1st of May on the debit side. So you write it there. And then sales, well, your nominal section is just sales, cost of sales, all of those. Remember, there are some accounts that you created. You have to also write them in here. The order doesn't really matter as long as they are in the nominal section and as long as their values are on the correct side. And very important, right at the end of the exercise, you can actually test yourself by checking that your total debits must equal your total credits.